Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can use HitFilm Pro 2017. So by this stage I assume you already know what HitFilm is, uh, why you want to use it and all of those sorts of things. If not then I've got two videos which I will link up in the description for a review of HitFilm if you don't know what it is and also some of the new features of this new version Pro 2017. At the very beginning you're greeted by this home screen where it has a bunch of useful and helpful uh, information. So they've got loads of videos from their YouTube channel as well as some blog posts, all sorts of really cool things here. Now to begin your project um, then you're going to have to click on the new button. So click it right here, top left hand corner um, and once it loads you'll see that we move from the home tab right up here um, into the project tab and that's where we set up all of our project settings. So here we can choose a template. We've got loads and loads of templates. HitFilm now does support 8K import, um, but you can choose from all sorts of different things such as 4K, 2K, uh, DCI and normal HD. I'm going to go with 1080p at 25 frames per second. Now if you don't want to choose a template, you can always type in the exact amount of pixels uh, that you want for your project, as well as your exact frame rate. Once you've set up all of these options, you can begin editing or compositing. So compositing is where we do visual effects which I'll talk about later. I'm sorry if you can hear that helicopter. Um, but there's also editing which is what you probably want to start off doing. So just hit start editing and we'll move into the edit tab. Alright guys so here we are in the editing workspace. Um, so this is where we, we edit our videos and you'll spend probably all of your time, most of your time um, in this editing tab right here. So here we have the viewer. This is very important. It's pretty much where we view our final product. Um, we've also got uh, our timeline, our editing timeline, and our editor for all of our tools down the left hand side. We've got our video tracks up on the top here as well as our audio tracks down here. And we can adjust the master levels right here. You can layer your video tracks on top of each other and as you move right um, then you're moving forward in time. This is three minutes, two minutes, one minute. Over here you've got a bunch of tabs. So you've got your media panel, uh, which is where you access all of your media. Pretty simple, you've got all your effects. Here there are over 500 effects and presets in HitFilm Pro 2017, which is great. You've also got your text, which is where you can edit your text, um, as well as a track where you can edit tracking and your history, if you want to go and undo things like that. Now up here you've got your trimmer, which is where you trim your media before you put it into the editing timeline. You've also got your controls, which is where you control um, things that happen to your clips, and your audio mixer, which is where you mix um, the levels between all the different uh, channels here. So the first thing you want to go and do is just import your media. So you can do that by dragging your files in here, or you can just hit the import button. So I'm just going to import my media right now. In fact, before I import my media, I'm just going to give my project a quick save by clicking on the save icon up here. So once you've done that, then you can go ahead and start importing your media. Alright guys, so I've imported all of my media. I've got two video files right here, uh, one called Bridged MP4, another one uh, which is my actual raw file. I've also got a music file and an image file right here. So before when I went into my project, um, I set my, my settings to be 1920 by 1080 at 25 frames per second. But as we can see, my media is actually at 29.97 frames per second. So we can either go back into our project tab and change that. Or easiest is to just drag it into our editing timeline like so. And once we let go of it, it'll say the editor sequence settings differ to this clip you're adding. Do you want to change it? And if you want to change it, then you can click yes. So now my project is 1080p at 29.97 frames per second. Now similarly, if I delete this clip and I add in my 4K version, like so, then it'll repeat the process and we can just hit yes um, if we want to make it a 4K timeline. I'm just going to be editing in 1080p uh, to reduce render times and such. So once you're in here, you've got a bunch of tools. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but there's a few you should know. Firstly, this is the uh, ordinary selection tool. So you can select clips like so. You can also shorten them down to whatever length you want. Um, and you can also move them around like so move them up into different audio and video tracks as well. Now one thing I should mention is that here you've got a timeline scale which is where you can zoom into your timeline. 
Now you've also got your uh, drag tool here, which is where you can drag left and right, up and down, in between, in your timeline. So it's pretty much just like a scrolling tool. Here you've got the slice tool, um, and here you can just literally click on a clip and it'll slice it in half, and you can drag and edit these parts separately to each other. Now there are also a bunch of really cool editing tools here as well, but you've also got the rate stretch tool, which is where instead of extending the length of the clip by just extending the media length, um, you can actually just drag out the time like so. So now it's roughly playing at half speed, which is pretty cool. Now if you want to change time on your clip as well, you can also just right click on it and press speed slash duration like so. And you can just set it to an exact number like 50%. Or well, I'm just going to set it back to 100%. So I'm going to go back into my history um, to before I slice my objects, like so. So I'm going to go before I slice my objects. Um, and now we've got our one clip in our timeline. I'm going to now go over um, some of the effects that you can apply on here. So in HitFilm, there's a whole bunch of effects. As I mentioned before, there are over 500 effects and presets in this place. So You've got all sorts of really cool audio effects, if you've got 360 video, uh, which you film now supports, you can also do all of that sort of stuff. But one of the most basic effects is just the brightness and contrast effect. So I'm going to grab that, um, drag it onto my video layer, um, it'll go into our controls. And this is where we can adjust properties um, for our clips. So in our controls, under the effects tab, right here, we can open up brightness and contrast, and uh, we can brighten it up or we can darken it and we can make it more contrasty like so um, and this is really 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 cool it works really well pretty simple effect now again there are so many effects here that I can't go through all of them in just one video but that's pretty much how you apply your effects you can select the effect and press the delete key to delete it and if I go into the audio tab right here you can see there are also a bunch of audio effects so if I just go to something like noise reduction and drag it onto my video uh, make sure you drag it onto your audio track instead of your video track this time um, because you're actually doing your audio. So that's really the basics of editing, but HitFilm is also a visual effects and compositing program. So to unlock these features, we have to go into what's called a composite shot. So to create a composite shot, there are actually loads of ways of creating composite shots. So if you click on a clip in the timeline, you can turn it into a composite shot uh, by clicking this button here, which is Make Composite Shot. Now once you click this button, you'll come up with a bunch of properties um, and all sorts of things. Just leave them the same um, and click OK. And once you've done that, you'll be in a composite shot. Um, or you can go into your media panel, do the same thing here, right click make composite shot. Or uh, create a new media um, and create a composite shot. Um, and this way you can create a blank composite shot, uh, which is the duration uh, and the settings, all that you want. So once we're in our composite shot here, um, we'll notice that the timeline is a very bit different. So here we have a track editing style, which is um, which means that you can layer videos on top of each other, but also side by side, like so. We can put these side by side, one after another. But in a composite shot, um, you can't really do that. So in a composite shot, one layer is just one video file. And if you want to put multiple video files together, then you have to layer them on top of each other. Some effects, such as these quick 3D ones, um, once you drag them on, they actually drag on as a new layer in your composite shot, uh, which is pretty cool. Hi guys, so I'm actually in the process of editing this video right now, and I just realized that I've left out something very important, which is how you can add text uh, inside of HitFilm. So in HitFilm, in your composite shot, um, you can only add text in your composite shot, by the way, so you cannot add text as uh, something in your editor. But in your composite shot, uh, to create text, you can press a new layer button right here. Once you press that, you'll come up with a bunch of options such as plane, camera, um, and also text. So once you select that, um, once you select text, then it'll create a new layer, a new text layer. And you can go into your text tool right here. So you've got a bunch of tools here, um, a hand tool, selection tool, as well as three mask tools, which I've got to talk about as well. Um, but I won't go into those today. You'll select your text tool, which is where you can type up uh, all sorts of things in your text box. Then you can highlight all of that, go into your text tab over here, and uh, change the properties of that. 
I'm sorry that I didn't actually go through that in the actual video. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are fine with that. That's how you create text uh, in your hit film composite shot. Now, one thing that is very important uh, to people doing visual effects is keyframing. So I'm just going to quickly go over that. If you go into your controls panel over here, you'll notice that these properties all have this empty circle. And this empty circle is how we keyframe. So if I just click the empty circle next to position, you'll notice two things. It goes blue, and there's also a little blue circle inside of that. What the blue means is that keyframe is enabled for this property. And what the little blue circle inside of that means is that there is a keyframe on that point. So if we look at our layers here, if we open up uh, this image here, if we go to transform and we go to position, then we'll notice that there's a keyframe at the very beginning here. And this is shown as a diamond because it's a normal constant keyframe. You'll notice that we can change the interpolation of the keyframe here. But you'll notice that as we move away from that point, um, the circle remains blue, but there's no little dot inside of it now, which means that there's no keyframe on that point. And to create a new keyframe, um, it's not very complicated. All you have to do is change the value. So uh, let's just say drag the image to the right, and you'll see that we've automatically created a keyframe here. Um, and between these keyframes now, uh, it'll smoothly move from the left to the right, as you'd expect it to. Of course, you can keyframe almost any value in a composite shot. So in here, you can only really keyframe uh, the opacity of your video layers and the level of your audio. But in the composite shot, you can keyframe pretty much anything. So for example, if I uh, just get rid of these keyframes by clicking the, the blue icon again, which means that now keyframing is not enabled, I just reset it to zero, zero. If I go into we can also keyframe all sorts of things here. So we can keyframe the seed, we can keyframe the amount of trunks that there is, um, we can keep going to the branches, we can keyframe the amount of branches there are. Now one thing I should mention is that perhaps for compositing, uh, this is not the right workspace. And what I mean is that HitFilm's workspace is really quite flexible and you can change things around, you can uh, drag things around like so. It's very flexible and you can move, say, the history um, into a tab up here. But there are also some default ones. So in a Mac, if you go to View, uh, workspace you can choose from some great ones. Now in the compositing workspace you have a really big viewer, a really small trimmer, um, as well as your color scopes and all sorts of other uh, cool things that you need for compositing. On Windows you can change your workspace by uh, clicking the grid like button next to your undo and redo buttons right here. Now HitFilm is also pretty good at grading so as you can see we've got our color scopes here. If I just remove this uh, image file here. Now if we go into the effects panel here there are so many effects here for color correction and color grading, um, all sorts of really cool things. You've got a three-way color correction tool here. Um, and I'm not going to go into all of these uh, in this particular video, but um, one really cool one that's available in the pro version is CineStyle. Just a really quick, easy um, effect that makes your, your video look like it's really professional. Additionally, if we go and delete this CineStyle effect, um, if we close up all of these folders, uh, we can go down into the presets at the very bottom. You'll find loads of really cool presets here. 2D effects, 3D effects, really cool stuff, but also film looks. Now in composite shot, grading is also made really easy with the grade layer. So if you've got loads of different layers um, of stuff, and you can't apply these, these effects to every single layer, instead you can create a new layer, a grade layer. And if you apply an effect to this layer, it'll affect all the layers below it. Um, which is really, really useful if you're in a composite shot and you want to grade the composite shot. So that's pretty much the basics of how you can use HitFilm Pro uh, to edit your videos. If we go back into our media panel, you can also add in images um, into the top here, into a second video layer like so, so you can layer up your video files just like this. Um, and as well as this, you can also add some music. You can drag it onto an existing audio track, or alternatively, you can right-click, insert track, name it whatever you want, so for example, music, and you can drag it straight down in there. Now once you've done all of this, uh, you can choose to export. So there's two buttons here, export contents and export in and out area, or you could just go straight into the export panel. But as you'll have noticed, I'm in the demo mode at the moment. In the demo mode, which is free for you guys to try out, if you're still sort of uncertain about buying this program, uh, then you're not allowed to export. But uh, if you do activate it and you do buy uh, the pro version properly, uh, then you can export your videos 
set up export queues uh, to export multiple videos one after another um, and that's pretty much how you export your videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope it was helpful to you if you wanted to know how to use HitFilm Pro, a great editing and visual effects application. I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay shiny. Bye.